So what the labs can do now is they can design your prostheses. They can look at it and they can say, there's not a lot of height here, and they can call you, and they can say, based on the fact that we don't have a lot of height, crown height space, would you like for us to move to an I-bar, which is a, a, a milled titanium bar that perfectly matches with the zirconia overlay that goes over the whole thing. So imagine a, a porcelain fused to crown, but it's a, it's a zirconia on top of titanium for the entire full arch solution that's, that's assembled together in the laboratory and sent to you as one piece. It's a beautiful solution for people who are doing, especially for people that are doing, quote, FP1 or FP2 types of solutions. Why? Because those inherently are not, they don't have much connector space. So the, the area of the material between the, the teeth is historically small if you're doing regular crown and bridge on regular teeth, right? That's your, that's your weak spot. So you want your connector space to be tall. So when you're doing FP1s, you don't have a lot of high, crown high space. So if you're doing FP1s and you're not play, placing a lot of implants, your spans are long. So if the distance between the implants, like an all on four, if the distance is really large, you have a lot of pontix, which means you have a lot of flexure. If you have a lot of flexure and you have a brittle material like a zirconia, there's a real high chance that you're going to have a catastrophic failure. And remember, Many times these catastrophic failures don't happen right away. They require a number of cycles for them to propagate. And the unfortunate thing about that is that when something breaks a number of years after delivery, sometimes we wash and absolve ourselves of that responsibility. And many times it is our responsibility, our industry's responsibility, because the original solution wasn't engineered properly for longevity.